But if we follow that logic, if it's only a question of mathematics, then it would be even better to be raised in a three-parent family. So why don't we have uh, why, why don't we have multiple marriages? Hmm? Why can't a man have two wives or a wife have two husbands? Or perhaps we could have three men being married together or three women being married together. Wouldn't that be better? Isn't three better than two and two better than one? We use the language single parent families to conceal the real, the truth of the problem. And what we mean by single parent families, what we mean 95% of the time is a fatherless home. That's what we mean. And we argue. You know, I mean, Dr. Phil is going to take this little girl that started this program talking about a 15 year old girl who's out selling herself as a prostitute running away from home on multiple occasions, already invested a couple hundred thousand dollars in trying to give her psychiatric care, some sort of care. Now they're going to give her another dose. That ain't going to work. What the child needed was a father. And nobody even wants to talk about that. Nobody even wants to. They're just saying he's, he's talking to the mom and he congratulates her about how tough she is because she doesn't want to take the daughter back. All right? This mother in this case that was on television tonight, she doesn't want to take the daughter back because she knows the daughter will leave right away. But the mother's, the daughter incidentally is pregnant, 15 years old, prostitute, pregnant. She is not, she does not have AIDS. She hasn't picked up any sexually transmitted diseases, but she is pregnant. The word comes out on the program and the mother is unmoved. There's not a tear in her eye. This is a situation that I look at and I say to me, if I was on that program, I'd say, Mom, where's Dad? And I'd listen to some cock and bull story about how there was a divorce and there were irreconcilable differences. I don't care if you've got irreconcilable differences. If you are married and you have children, you don't file for a divorce unless somebody has committed physical violence against the other members of the family. Under those circumstances, yeah, I can go along with a divorce. But irreconcilable differences, all that means is you want a fresh man between your legs. That's all it means. Or maybe you don't want any man at all. But what it ultimately means is somebody is saying, I don't give a damn about my, my oath to God, and I don't give a damn about the welfare of the children, and I don't give a damn about the welfare of my spouse. I want what I want. And I'm prepared to destroy every life around me to have what I want. If I were making the laws on divorce, I guarantee you the way it would be. You want a divorce? Fine. You can have a divorce anytime you want. But here's the deal. If you file for a no-fault divorce, if you don't have cause, that you can demonstrate and prove that the spouse has been physically abusive, sexually abusive, whatever, if all you got is irreconcilable differences, you want a no-fault divorce, I understand that, and I don't care whether it's man or woman. You want a no-fault divorce, we'll give you one. But here's the deal, Bubba. You're going to lose custody. Okay, because what you're saying is your personal happiness is more important than not only your spouse's happiness, but also the happiness and future of your children. Anyone who files for that no-fault divorce is only saying, me, 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 it's all about me, it's all about me. I want what I want, to hell with everybody else. And to hell even with my oath to God. To hell with all of it, it's all about me. Do what thou wilt is exactly the fundamental motto of, I can't remember his name, but... Witchcraft, sorcery, Satanism. Do what thou wilt. doesn't matter. Whatever you want. Do what you want to do. Do what you want to do. Don't do what God says. Don't do what you promise to do. Change your mind any time you want. You're entitled. You women are entitled to change your mind any time you want. Yeah. No, you're not. It's time the women in this country started behaving themselves like adults rather than responsible adults, rather than a pack of greedy, money-grubbing sluts who think they can get away with murder because they have been getting away with murder. Forty million children murdered by their moms in my lifetime. What, a little over 40 years now? Something like 40 years abortion's been legalized? We're talking about, I don't know, a million children a year on average murdered. That's all. Mom, it's inconvenient to have the child, so let's just kill the child. But we're still going to just respect you, ladies. We respect. I just want you girls to know that, boy, do we men respect you. Because, after all, it's not like you kill all your children, right, girls? You just kill one out of four. So there's cause for real celebration, and maybe we should even have a special award for Mother's Day. From the survivors. The children, let's have a special award for mom on Mother's Day from the children she didn't murder. We could have a card from Hallmark 
says, "Thanks, mom, for not murdering me." And we could have, we wouldn't sell many. <laughs> I mean, all of the kids, survivors, all of the children today, they could buy the card. Thank you, mom, for not murdering me. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day. And for some of them who still even have their father, biological father, they could say, "Thanks, mom, for not murdering me and from not stripping me of my relationship to my biological father, and thereby crippling me." <clears throat> it's a hallmark moment, folks. Let me give you one more point, though. And in all of this, you've got to recognize that from an historical, a biological perspective, women are the most valuable member of the species. Women are more valuable innately than men. Do you understand that? Most people wouldn't think that from listening to what I've said up until now, but it's the truth. Women have always been and will always be, and that's why they're allowed to get away with murder, because they're more valuable. Why are they more valuable? You can see that answer in the Bible to some degree. There's passage in there where God says, Go forth, be fruitful, and populate the earth. Well, insofar as that is the mandate of not only our species, but virtually every species. I guarantee from the sparrow's perspective, you know, the, what the world needs is more sparrows. And cats believe if it was up to cats, there'd be nothing but cats in the world. And the same thing with every other species. Every species is constantly fighting to survive and propagate and not merely maintain its numbers, but expand its numbers. Now, we run into environmental limits on that. I mean, there are limits and species die. They over, you get too many animals, uh, too many rabbits in a particular area, and all of a sudden the rabbits start dying for lack of food or too many wolves. They clean out all the prey and then the wolves start to starve to death. There is a balance, we understand that, but nevertheless... Given that the fundamental drive in the species is to propagate, women, insofar as that's true, women are more valuable than men. And the reason for that is that you can take a population of that's 50-50. Take 100 people, 50 of them are adult men, 50 of them are adult women. How many, how large, what can the population be a year from now? It could be 150. Operating on the assumption that all 50 of the females were fertile and all 50 of them conceived, then we can go from a hundred population of 100, that's, 100, that's 50 men and 50 women, and next year we have 150. We've got 50 adult women, 50 adult men, and 50 children. We could have a population that was 99 men and one woman. Now what's the population going to be next year? The population is going to be 101. We've only got one woman. We've only got one vagina, only one birth canal, only one set of ovaries, only one fertile womb. And it is for this reason, this, the fertile womb is the bottleneck in reproduction. And having the fertile womb is the reason why women have always been favored. Huh? It's the reason why people opened the doors and carried the packages and treated women with courtesy. Why? Because women, if you didn't, they didn't give birth. And even when they did, birth extracted a terrible price. hundred years ago, women died much earlier than men. 200 years ago, a woman's life expectancy was maybe 30 years. The rigors of childbirth killed women. And men went on to live an extra 20, 25 years. And children wound up being raised by their fathers. And the, the, the first wife would die and he'd go out and marry another one. It was the nature of our species. But we have, men have, men, incidentally, men have advanced a medical establishment that's able to protect women and keep them from dying in childbirth. And on top of that, they've advanced a situation where women now, thanks to the pill, they don't have to have children. They can be contenders all their lives. Baby, you can be looking good. You don't have to have children. But what's happening? The society is dying. Well, the point I'm trying to make, and I'm going to run out of time before I can make it adequately, is that women have always been more valuable than men. Again, we use the example of 99 men and one woman. One woman. You're only going to have a population of 101 next year. You could have a society, however, of 99 women and just one man. I guarantee you the one man can impregnate 99 women. With one man and 99 women, we could, the society, imagine a little tribe. That tribe can be doubled in size by next year. One man, that's all it takes. This is the reason why men were historically the disposable members of our society. They were the ones who went off to war. They're the ones who worked in the coal mines. They're the ones who risked dangers outside of the tribe. Because we didn't need them. But today we live in a society where women aren't giving birth. And insofar as they're not, their value has been diminished enormously. 
They have become essentially a collection of dead holes. They are sperm receptacles. If you're on the pill, you're a sperm receptacle. That's what you are. Women complain, men treat me like a sperm receptacle. Yes, that's what you are. If you're on the pill, women have abandoned the fundament, the essence of their value, which is the capacity to give birth. It's been abandoned. It's been passed on. And yet they want to command the same respect that they once enjoyed. It's not going to happen. And as a result, I have no idea what's going on in this country, but in terms of gender relationships, it's one of those things where, boy, I'll tell you, if this isn't as tough as it can be, I don't know, I don't know how it can get much worse. We're out of time. I doubt that I've ad addressed this program adequately, but at least it felt good to me. I want to thank you all for listening. I'll be back next week, and we'll deal with something that is a list thus ranting, hopefully. But maybe not. You can never tell. I'm Alfred Addis. This is the American Independence Hour. Thanks for listening. Have a good weekend. God bless you all. Good night. <laughs>